this river I've been running ever since It's been a long, long time coming But I know, I know Change has got to come back Ooh, yes it is It happened before I knew it It's like my face had been stolen But I still had to use it in the late 1990s and through the first part of the century, Terry Marks was one of thousands of people who unwittingly gave their identity over to a trend of multi-use, copyright-free advertising images. Barring any outright slander, they had no control over the use of their images. Worse, they got little to no compensation. I used to work in graphic design and marketing, and a friend of mine who was a photographer, asked me if I would be willing to sit, you know, to have my picture taken for a project he was working on for royalty-free, a CD-ROM, you know, those, the CD. I had no idea what the outcome might be. No one really knew what the impact of this would be. Photography for marketing and advertising was still largely custom. But with the advent of easy access, inexpensive, non-limited use photography, that was all about to change. I was only at his studio for around 15, maybe 20 minutes. We shot a few rolls of film. I made some jokes. He took some pictures. We went to lunch, that's all we did. It was merely for fun. And then they started to appear. Without warning, his image began to appear in posters, in promo videos, in advertising and marketing pieces. At first, I, I found it funny. I was the poster child for any number of things. Microsoft, you remember that company. They had the, the SQL Server product um, for compact computers as well. Bank of America, the National Guard. I was actually also the turn off your cellular phone man at the movies. People I knew would come up to me and they would tell me, you're famous, my God, you're famous. But I wasn't famous. I was ubiquitous. And ubiquitous is like Chinese food. You can eat a ton, just a lot of it, and a half hour later, you're hungry again. After a while, people would stop me on the street still and tell me I looked familiar. After all those, those weird ones started, and those encounters, they would happen. And it, it just got embarrassing. And it was the end of the salad days, I can tell you that. Okay, people need those things. They're not bad. Not by themselves, I'm not here to judge anybody. It's just when they say what they said, next to my picture. <sighs> Not only was my 15 minutes of fame sneaking by in 28K snippets on the World Wide Web, I was being made out to be things that I was not. And that, my friend, is just devastating. Personally. Devastating. Before I knew it, my reputation 
was destroyed. My credibility was shot in just a few short years. Nobody believed I was who I was anymore. Of the things that I have learned is that it doesn't matter how much money you've earned, how handsome you used to be, how pretty the girls were that you used to date. Because, my friend, and mark my words, because this is wisdom, all glory is fleeting. The only legacy that we can impart to other people that can live on beyond us is the graciousness and the way that we treat the people around us. That's our legacy. That is the only thing that will survive after you and after I have given up the ghost. That is truth. Unless, of course, you are a psychotic software salesman who happens to be impotent, who was in the National Guard with inflammation of your fruity parts, and then it's all for caca. Do you hear what I'm saying? The hell, the Hades, pardon me, in a hefty bag. It's over. And that is all you have when it's done. That's all. In the slow destruction of his self, a strange quirk developed in Mr. Marx. He, a man of mixed American and Korean descent, in his later years somehow procured a Yiddish accent. This interview is over. Get out. Get out of my house. Now. Out. Out. <laughs>